There's a butterfly outside. Does my beanie look fine? I had to like fold it in a weird way just so I could like wear it with the logo out. What am I doing today? Oh, today's gonna be fun. Today, we're gonna be going through some of my personal highlights of New York Fashion Week's fall winter 2023 shows. Let's get started, shall we? Okay, Fashion Week, if you haven't seen it, it's honestly been pretty great. There's some pretty interesting looks to fall winter 23 show. It actually might even be pre-fall. I'm not entirely sure. I didn't really look into it that much. <laughs> fall winter fashion is personally my favorite. It's when we really get to start playing with layers and textures and cuts. I feel the best way. Cause as much as I love summer and spring and there are a lot of beautiful things, you know, like florals, groundbreaking. <laughs> There's a lot of really interesting textures that I really do enjoy that appear in fall. However, I do feel like this fall, winter, 2023, these shows, there was actually some really, really interesting moments that I would like to talk about. So without further ado, let's get to it, shall we? I want to start off with, I personally think, one of the biggest bangers that came to New York Fashion Week, and that is the Area Show. Area in New York City is an amazing brand. They do some iconic, iconic, pieces. A lot of stuff that are heavily embellished, heavily jeweled, and very, very interesting cuts. I believe their most recent show, they did these very interesting butterfly cuts, and I don't even know if that was actually on a show or just like a release of theirs. I feel they do some very, very visually impactful pieces. The runway is a perfect place for things like that, you know, things with visual impact. This runway that was so bizarre but interesting first of all they showcase such interesting cuts and in interesting colors and they went ahead and took a step further and took fur in a very different approach there's the whole animal rights activism in fashion what area did is they took fabric and they printed fur texture on it and then created these long coats with fur print on them this whole collection feels like a nod sort of a punch and a jab to animal skins being used in fashion. The pieces that actually look like they're minks being put on some sort of a reference to like mink fur stoles that were like kept in their full body. There was even actual bones, it seemed, that were holding these twisted ruched garments together. And it's honestly quite fascinating. There was a mix of like some interesting suiting and some interesting colors, but what really sold me were these crystallized skulls further going forward in this sort of like skull motif, including suiting and denim that had these slashes through them and even some metallic embellishments that looked like fingers. They were very, very interesting garments. And I really love this play on this fur coat and fur coats in general with this printed mink. I think it's really, really interesting. And I kind of hope things like this happen more often, sort of printing just animal skins. So we get visual texture. I, I think it's really, really fascinating and really, really cool. I love this show. My personal favorite looks have to be that ending black and gray coat. Wow. Also all the looks that were just boots, panties, and that matching coat, real, real bangers. I feel like these are looks that can, people can really invest in because it's sort of like everything that is a fur texture but not a fur texture and it's not hot, but it's that sort of like campy Moschino vibe, I feel, but it's still so glamorous and elevated and I find it very interesting. Up next, I actually did a full video talking about Peter Doe presenting at Helmet Lang and I thought about doing a solo video on Helmet Lang Peter Doe. Let me know if that sounds interesting. But I am going to talk about this runway for a little bit because I actually do think it was very successful. I think the Peter Doe aesthetic breathes in this with that Helmet Lang twist. And while I do feel it is more Peter Doe than it is Helmet Lang, I personally feel that Helmet Lang and Peter Doe were not far off from each other. And this sort of idea that he has taken here, that's very New York. The vibe of these clothing is very New York. I like the shirts printed on it. I feel like that is a reference to a Helmet Lang shirt print that was done ages ago, but I also really love this bus print that was used to sort of offset all these colors and the black and white neutrals. And of course, I expected black and white neutrals. I expected clean suiting, and that's what Peter Doe delivered. But I was really intrigued by these like bright cuts and these like sashes that were cutting through a lot of the suits in the pink and the yellow. It felt very interesting. It felt like seatbelts. I feel like this whole collection was inspired by the New York City taxi. I honestly think it was done very, very successful. And I like 
these looks. I'm not the biggest fan of the last three women's looks, but I do like the introducing of these colors. I do feel like, again, Peter Doe suiting is always gonna be banging. I feel like the helmet laying aesthetic in the leather and the sort of satiny fabrics were really, really shown through here. I personally did enjoy it. Up next, we have a banger. The Palomo Spain cruising in the Rose Garden. This collection felt so flamboyant. Like this collection is peacocking to an absolute T. Every look felt extravagant and over the top and still campy and intriguing. I do think it's, an, it's a nod to cruising for all the gays that know, you know. I do love this aesthetic of it being like sort of rich aristocrat but still flamboyant and sort of free and openly sexual and it felt so romantic while still being a little promiscuous i feel and i feel like the palomo spain aesthetic sort of caters to a certain market and that market's gonna eat this up a personal favorite is the one that has just a giant feather with this long leather trench i really really love this look i also really love the one with just like these pants that have this texture around them that almost feels feathery and there was also this sort of like corseted lace look that had these like feather crowns that felt almost like a it felt almost like those like greek crowns that are worn the laurel wreaths that are worn only on the back of the head that like decorated the face i even really really loved this look that had like the same sort of like laurel feather crown behind the head that was this long sheer almost nighty dress and i thought it was very very Romantic. All these looks felt very romantic, but sexual. There was a nice juxtaposition between all of the looks, and I genuinely enjoyed the fantasy they were selling, and I, I couldn't be more happy with this. This last thing I wanted to talk about was really just one specific moment, and because of this specific moment, I found a designer that I'm very intrigued in. A Sanimito of Sanimito Vintage it does all eco-friendly fabrics, recycling old clothing, and I think they do it in a very, very amazing way it feels very like modern sexy girl but still like she loves the planet <laughs> like she uses a metal straw she's not using that plastic stuff oh no but what i really wanted to talk about and i'll be showing it right here is this moment sunny Miro herself comes out and alters this pair of pants into this long trained mini skirt and i really enjoy the idea of seeing that visual thought process in designers. She took a garment right on the runway and altered it right then and there, staying very true to her brand, staying very true to this sort of upcycling that she does on her own brand that she's been become known for, that I am now seeing. This moment alone for me has her winning fashion week. I think it is so jaw-dropping, so insane because the look also does look amazing. I might actually do this with a pair of jeans if I can find them. Let me know if that sounds interesting because I actually do think this is a really, really interesting idea. This is a way to have a performative aspect in your runway without it being so overdone. Like I remember seeing years ago where someone's dress was the tablecloth and they walked off and all the stuff on the table fell off. Like this is a way to have runway impactfulness without feeling a little gimmicky. I think it stays true to her aesthetic and I think it's really, really cool. But with that, I'm done here. Let me know if you enjoyed these looks. Let me know if I should keep doing videos like this where I talk about my personal favorite things happening in fashion. You know, I don't mind being your fashion news reporter, but I will say it's got to interest me too. <laughs> I've got to like it for me to talk about it personally. I hope you like, comment, and subscribe. I hope you enjoyed my commentary on these looks. Let me know what you liked from this recent New York Fashion Week and let me know what you're excited to potentially purchase or what you wish you could purchase because I know I have a few ideas that I'm leaning towards based on these collections and I think it's very exciting. Like, I really want that fake fur. I think it is so cool. The printed fur, I think it's so comical and fun. I may have moved everything trying to set up my outro, but take care, have fun, keep sketching, and I hope you all have a wonderful day. Bye!